Okay, I'm going to begin. Um, we have a bunch of folks in the room, and uh, we'll, I'm sure that more more people will join us as we proceed. My name is Matt Cohen, uh, President and CEO of the Long Island Association. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really excited about this program today. You know, one of the key initiatives, one of the things that I want to focus on now uh, that I've become President and CEO is doing uh, as much as possible, more than we've been doing, as much as we possibly can to help the small business community uh, who've really been through hell and back again uh, through COVID. And for those that were able to navigate the pandemic and keep their doors open. Uh, it's really, uh, we, we should really have a shared responsibility to do what we can to support them, uh, to purchase goods at their stores and to help them be successful and thrive in this post COVID economy. So with that said, today's program um, is, about a, an, um, is about an initiative that Governor Cuomo announced recently uh, called the Pandemic Small Business Recovery Grant Program uh, about COVID-19, it's, it's now open. Uh, for applications is an $800 million program. And the program reimburses New York small businesses with grants of up to $50,000 for COVID related expenses incurred between March 1st, 2020 and April 1st, 2021. Grants will be awarded to small and micro businesses and small for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations with priority being given to socially and economically disadvantaged business owners, including minority and women owned business enterprises, service disabled veteran owned businesses, and veteran-owned businesses and businesses located in economically distressed communities. So it's a great program. Our small business members, our small business community should really do, uh, take a look at it, see if it applies to them, uh, see if it could help them in their businesses. Their businesses. Um, the, the, the arm of the state that's going to be uh, running this program is Empire State Development, the economic development arm of New York State government. And we're very fortunate today to have, um, I'm sorry, to have Wei Min Chung, with us today, Wei Min is going to be, uh, you can't see her, um, but because because her uh, computer doesn't have a camera, but you will be hearing from her and he'll, she'll be sharing a PowerPoint uh, that'll be very informative. So Wei Min is the Senior Director of Business and Economic Development at Empire State Development. She works in strategic policy and program development for small businesses, minority and or women owned enterprises, disaster relief, disaster relief initiatives and overall state economic development projects. She has more than 25 years of experience in investment banking, nonprofit management, government, and entrepreneurship development. With that said, I want to introduce Wei Min Chung. Take it away, Wei Min. Hi, thank you so much, Matt Cohen, and uh, also the Long Island Association for helping uh, spread the word about the grant program. I am going to share my slides right now, so I'm going to upload those, so just bear with me for a moment, and let me know, Matt, if you can see the whole screen. Yes, we can. Can you see it? Great, yes. excellent, great. Thank you so much again for spending the time this afternoon to learn about the $800 million New York State COVID-19 Pandemic Small Business Recovery Grant Program. And during the next uh, 35 minutes, we're going to learn about the overview of the program, who can apply, how can you apply, what's eligible expense, who is not able to apply, as well as next steps, uh, and also documentation, how you prove that you are an eligible entity to apply. So without further ado, I am going to walk you through the program. Uh, don't be scared by the number of slides that may show up at the very left corner, the 40 pages. I'm going to speak only to 12 slides in specific details. The rest of it is going to be for you to uh, walk them through with me to, to let you know what the next steps will be once you complete the application on the website. And also, you can find this entire set of deck of uh, the program info on www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com. Once again, it's www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com, which is the portal for the application and the program. You can go and scroll down and be able to click on Program Guide, and it will be the exact same presentation that I'm giving you today that you can actually download. Right now, we have the version in Spanish as well as in English. Uh, next week, you're going to be able to find the same Program Guide and Application Guide in um, 11 other languages that are being developed right now. So without further ado, I'm going to go through the next section. So what is the program, New York State COVID-19 Pandemic Small Business Recovery Grant Program? It is a program that was created to provide flexible grant financing um, to currently viable small businesses, micro businesses, and for-profit independent arts organizations in the state of New York who have experienced economic hardship due to COVID-19 pandemic. How much can you qualify for if you are eligible? You can qualify for, uh, depending on your gross receipts in 2019, 
which shows a range of $25,000 to $500,000. Um, if you actually have a gross receipt of $25,000 to $49,999, you are eligible to get a grant of $5,000 per business. If you have a gross receipt of $50,000 to $99,999, you're eligible to receive a grant of $10,000. If your gross receipt in 2019 was $100,000 to $500,000, you're maxed out of $50,000 and or um, 10% of your gross receipt. So if you made $250,000, you're maxed out of 10%, which is $25,000. Now, some of you may say, hey, I see here it says per business. So does that mean if I own more than one business, I could actually get more than one grant? The answer is yes. As long as the uh, you have a distinctive EIN number for each of the eligible business, then you can receive more than one grant uh, if approved. You could also make sure on your sole proprietorship, you have a dis distinctive Schedule C for each of the business, then you can apply for more than one business application. How do you qualify for the program as defined by small business, micro businesses, and for-profit independent arts organizations? A small business is defined as a business registered, incorporated, running a business that's licensed in New York State, independently owned, operated, not dominant in this field, and has fewer than 100 employees. Same definition except for the number of employees to qualify as a small micro business. A micro business should have fewer than 10 employees, also registered, licensed, and doing business independently and operated in the state of New York. And for for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations, it means a medium-sized small um, private for profit independently operated live performance venue, promoter, production company, performance related business located in the state of New York that has been negatively impacted by COVID 19 health and safety protocols. And you should have a full time equivalent of 100 employees. A lot of the arts and cultural organizations might be seasonal. So you just add the um, number of employees, um, hours worked. So for every 40 hours, it's equal to one full-time equivalent employee. So just add up all the hours you have uh, on your books, and you should have fewer than 100 employees to be able to qualify for the program. Now, all businesses, I would say, I'm going to assume that 99% uh, of the businesses have been impacted by COVID-19, but to be uh, legal, in terms of how it's defined, it's basically uh, businesses that have been impacted by the Executive Order 202 of 2020 issued by Governor Cuomo or any other subsequent extension of such executive order that had to be complied for COVID-19 pandemic. So basically, I would say uh, all applicants pretty much, unless there are some specialized um, business that had a robust business during COVID, maybe if you were making masks, you may not have been impacted, but otherwise everyone else has been impacted you could qualify to apply if you can fit into one of these three buckets for a defined um, business for eligibility. So I'm going to continue now to talk about uh, small business qualifications. So what do you have to provide and also what type of a documentation you may uh, upload to be able to comply with the request for application? A small business, micro business, and for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations, you should have two sets of uh, uh, financial information, which are uh, your tax returns from 2019 and 2020 and have been operational as well as uh, currently operating to show that you are interested in uh, continuing to operate as well as you're viable for you to be eligible for the program. So you have to be set up um, and be operating by March 1st of 2019 to meet the criteria. And the way you're gonna show viability is by comparing, actually, actually by looking at the number uh, that shows up on your net income on your tax returns from 2019. So viable means that in 2019 net income line, if you show $1 or more in, in profit, you're eligible for the program. So if in 2019 tax return, you had a loss of $25, you are un unfortunately unable to prove uh, in this particular criteria that is across the board for all applicants that you're a viable business. You need to demonstrate $1 or more to show net profits in 2019 to prove that you're viable for the program. So applicants uh, that are submitting the application also need to uh, show 25% loss when comparing their 2020 
gross receipts when compared to 2019 gross receipts based on their tax returns. So you can find those numbers on your gross receipts um, not line on line uh, on line one a for your R IRS form 1120 or 1065 or line one um, on your IRS form 1040 schedule C. So you can find your gross receipts there and make sure that you have the whole set, the complete set uh, to be able to be uploaded in PDF format to be able to show uh, the calculation. Businesses between $25,000 and $500,000 can be eligible for the program, like I said before, based on the amount of uh, grant awards. You need to then demonstrate that you have total expenses also in 2020 business income tax return that are greater than the grant amounts. So if you do get uh, $10,000 in your awards, but your total expenses is $8,000, you'll be maxed out at $8,000. Uh, you also need to be in substantial compliance with applicable federal, state, and local laws, regulation, codes, and requirements. These slides, uh, like I said, if you have just joined us, can be found on the website www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com, so you don't have to take copious note right now. You'll be able to download and print out uh, for your own uh, read whenever you have a chance. I'm going to continue with the qualification for the program. So you must also not owe any federal, state, local taxes prior to July 15 of 2020, unless you have a moratorium uh, in place, approved uh, repayment plan by any of the authorities I mentioned before, or a current deferral plan and agreement to, uh, to make payments uh, with the authorities um, for the taxes that you may have owed. You also must not have qualified for business grant assistance programs under the Federal American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 or any other available federal COVID-19 economic recovery or business assistance grant program, including loan programs forgiven under the federal PPP program or are unable to obtain sufficient business assistance from such federal programs. This language was taken directly out of the legislation that enacted uh, this particular grant fund, and there are exceptions to this particular language. So if you're an applicant who did receive a PPP check or a PPP loan program, uh, either PPP-1 or PPP-2, it uh, doesn't matter if the loan was forgiven or yet to be forgiven, as long as the total is less than $100,000, you're good to go. You can apply for the program. If you did apply for COVID-19 IED or advanced grant program at $10,000 or less, you also are eligible for the program. And in addition, if you have applied to COVID-19 IEDL Supplemental Targeted Advanced Grant Program of $5,000 or less, you're eligible for the program, as well as if you are a venue and you have been shuttered for uh, the last few months, you apply for the SBA Shuttle Venue Operator Grant Program of any amount that you may have received or apply for, you are eligible for the program. You could also have applied for all of these and gotten awarded as long as the thresholds are met. So additional information about the application. Each applicant has to provide uh, acceptable to New York State that they are currently operational and that they're eligible um, to apply and not restricted by any state, local, and other agency mandates. Due to the number of applications that we expect to receive and um, a grant program, uh, even though the funding is up to $800,000, there will be lots of people interested in applying throughout the whole entire state of New York. So we encourage you to submit your application as soon as possible, including the documentation to start gathering those once you finish with the webinar to know what they are. Uh, to submit those in completion um, so that you can be considered for awards. Uh, so we're going to have a participation award um, policy, basically. So it's going to be uh, dependent on your business type, geography, industry, then we factor into the availability to receive a grant. Uh, also, will be given priority to socially, economically, and disadvantaged individuals and business owners. Uh, that may be including minority, woman-owned business enterprises, Certification is not a requirement for this particular uh, prioritization. It could also be a service disabled veteran owned businesses, veteran owned businesses, or businesses located in communities that are economically distressed prior to March 1st of 2020, as determined by the most recent 
recent census data. So the way the awards get awarded is uh, if you apply in June right now, the program opened in June 10th, we started to get lots of applications in. If you complete all your documentation upload, including your completed uh, application on the portal www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com, you'll be considered um, for an award um, to be uh, compared to all the other applicants within the uh, period of June. And by July, you should be hearing either you got awarded or if you have not heard that by July you have gotten awarded, you are still in the running until you receive an email from us saying, no, unfortunately, you're not awarded. So do not uh, worry if you do not receive communication. If you have submitted everything in June, by July, uh, you are still in the running for consideration. That could be uh, happening after that. Who are ineligible for the program? If you are a nonprofit, churches, or other religious institutions, you're not eligible. A government-owned entity or elected official offices are not eligible for this grant. Businesses primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities are not eligible for the program. Businesses that receive awards from the SBA Restaurant Revitalization Grant Program are not eligible for the program. Landlords and passive real estate income businesses, illegal businesses and enterprises, and other industry business types that may be specified by Empire State Development. Now I'm going to move on to gathering documentation. So when you go onto the portal, you're going to be asked to sign up on an account. So make sure you actually go visit the web page, sign up on an account, so you can actually fill out the application once you're on there. Once you finish the application, you will receive an email from Lendistry, which is our partner um, that we actually hire to administer the grant portal as well as the customer service number uh, and any other questions you may have as well as resource partners that you may actually seek out to help you with the gathering of documentation, clarification on the program, or any other inquiries you may have with uh, technology. Um, so when you actually do get to the portal, sign up for the account, you'll be provided with a username and password. Please keep it handy. And if you're ready to apply and, um, and, and fill in the documents, you answer a series of questions. If there are inquiries about accessibility, uh, there will be an option for accessibility for those who may need it. Also, there's a language um, service that is provided for the program. There are 12 languages in addition to English that is viable for anyone who may need it. You just go to the portal page, www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com. You click on the right-hand side where it says languages. Click the language that you like to work on, and the whole page will be translated in the language that you designated as well as any of the uh, attached uh, documentation for you and the application process. This specific program guide and deck is also available, like I mentioned before, on the um, web page for uh, those who may need it in Spanish. Other languages will be forthcoming next week if you need it. So now the documentation. What can you uh, provide to prove um, to be actually eligible for the program? We do need the two full sets of IRS returns from 2019 and 2020. So for those who have yet pending return to be filed for 2020, I recommend highly uh, that they file it as soon as possible so that you can actually submit for application. So for corporations and LLCs, you need the IRS Form 1120. For partnerships, you need the IRS Form 1065 and Schedule K1S. For sole proprietors, we need the IRS Form 1040 and Schedule C. For some of you may get a request from Lendistry, uh, who is administering the program, for another form called uh, the IRS Form 4506-C. This is a form where it allows um, the agency and Lendistry to request an actual um, set of uh, IRS completed documents from 2019 and 2020 on your behalf. In case there are pending questions or need to cl clarify some of the items on the tax return, they may solicit that directly from the IRS. Third, uh, you need to prove that your business location is in the state of New York and is currently operational. We just need two forms of document from the following list. We need either a copy of the current lease, a utility bill, a current business bank statement, a current business mortgage statement, a business credit card statement, a professional insurance bill, a payment processing statement such as Visa processing, MasterCard processing, um, maybe you know ADP for payroll processing that demonstrate your location for business. 
or um, NYSST 809 or ST100 self tax collection documentation for monthly or quarterly filers. So those are the documents list that you could select and provide a combination of two. Do not provide one of the same type, provide two of distinctive type of documents. We would definitely need a schedule of ownership uh, for the business for anyone who own more than 20% of the business. You're going to have to supply the list of names, addresses, social security numbers, and for those non-U.S. owners who do not have social security numbers, you must provide the individual taxpayer identification number and provide the form CP565 um, available from IRS to be able to comply with eligibility. We also need your phone numbers, emails, percentage of ownership, and photo ID for any of the owners uh, that I said uh, own own more than 20% of the business. I'm not gonna walk you through the specific uh, uh, form, but this is all the same for all the different types of incorporated businesses or individually owned businesses. For those employers that have employees, we're gonna ask you to submit your most recently submitted New York State 45 document, just so we know uh, how your uh, business uh, employment has been impacted. Next, we're going to also ask you for the proof of business organization. So one copy of the following document to show that you are incorporated legally or formed legally in the state of New York. We're going to need a copy either a current business license or a current business certificate or a certificate of organization or a certificate of assumed name or doing business as your New York State Certificate of Authority, Articles of Incorporation, or your New York State Municipality issued documents showing authorization to conduct business in the state of New York. Lastly, when you're awarded and we need to give you the money, we're going to need it in an electronic format um, uh, distribution form. So we're going to need you to sign uh, and actually send, send in the completed form, IRS form W9 and the bank info. I'll cover uh, what type of uh, acceptable trans transfer mechanism there is for this program uh, in uh, slides that ensues. What is ineligible use of funds? And what are eligible use of funds? Let me start with the eligible uses of funds. So you can use the money pretty much for any COVID-19 related expenses that is typical of your business incurred between March 1st of 2020 and April 1st of 2021. These includes payroll costs, commercial rent, mortgage payments for New York State based properties, but you cannot make any payments uh, for uh, prepayments of rent or mortgages. You could also use the funds for payments of local property or school taxes associated with a small business location in the state of New York. You can also use the funds for insurance costs, utility costs, cost of personal uh, PPE necessary to protect your consumers, workers, and uh, business uh, uh, partners that may be visiting your location heating, ventilation, and air conditioning costs, as well as uh, upgrades of machinery and equipment, uh, supplies of material necessary for compliance with COVID-19 health and safety protocols, or any other reasonable documents that you can show COVID-19 costs as approved by Empire State Development. And I would suggest that whatever you're going to use the money for, to document it on your own docket, just so that in case you get asked to provide those down the road, you have it available. Um, and for those who are thinking, how can I use this money to repay any of the loans I got from the federal grant? Uh, sorry, the federal financing programs for COVID-19, like under any other SBA loans or other federal programs or New York State New York Forward Loan Fund or any other New York State loan programs? The answer is no, you cannot use any of the loan proceeds. Um, uh, sorry, you cannot repay back any loan proceeds that you may have taken out uh, as a loan from any of these federal or state programs. So that's pretty much the overview of the program in terms of specific uh, information about who's eligible, how you can use the money, what documents I need. Now I'm going to talk about what happens after you upload your answers onto the application once you start the process. So the applicants, once they finish the application questions and answers, um, they will be asked to provide a certification on the application. So you can actually download the certification, which I'm going to show what it looks like. They look like a very extensive, but basically it covers all these things we just talked about to make sure you sign off and you agree upon. You could sign right here, either manually after you download and print out and upload again by scanning it back, or you can electronically sign the certification. 
If you need to uh, print it out, you could uh, click the uh, icon here on the portal to be able to download the uh, certification for you to review. For those people who are filling the application online and they have a specific question, they're not quite sure what the question asks, there will be videos that associate um, uh, with the questions. Uh, at hand, so you can actually click on a little eye icon next to the question, and a video will be presented for you to review to get answers to what the question really asks. For those who need translation for those, there'll be transcribing services under the setting, sort of like uh, with YouTube uh, videos you may watch. You can click on it, and it'll transcribe uh, for you on the um, on the page when you are looking at the video. So these. These pages just go through the electronically uh, download process, so it's very detailed. There are icons, there are screenshots for you, so you can uh, read them at your leisure when you're, uh, when you're ready to apply. So once you complete that, uh, you will get notified that either your application is complete or not, and you'll get an email from lendistry.com and not in Price Development or New York State. So now I'm going to walk you through some tips for applying based on technology suggestions as well as other follow-ups in terms of the uh, software that I mentioned uh, that you may be able to uh, access for a payment or electronic transfer of funds. So some quick tips. Please use Google Chrome as your choice of app to download as well as to upload and uh, fill out the application. It gives you specific uh, instructions on how you can do that, so please read that section to make sure that you are able to do this easily and seamlessly. We recommend that also um, you utilize uh, the PDF software to make sure that you upload the documents uh, so in one slot so that actually it could be reviewed. Let me just uh, go to this section for those who may not have the PDF um, app on their cell phone or on their computer to do that. So here, so for the uh, PDF documents, we will require that you uh, basically scan all the documents uh, in that format and make sure that it's not a photo, which is sort of like this one is incorrect, that it will not be reviewed, we need you to resubmit. You have to be a set of document under 15 megabytes in, in total, um, in, in terms of like a, a megabyte, uh, I guess, a, a capacity. So make sure you upload all your tax return in one shot as a scanned document in PDF, and this is the correct format. And if you do not have the PDF um, software or app, please uh, download it here. You could uh, get it for Apple format, Android format, if you're working on your um, cell phone. And for those who may not have the technology to upload their document, please call the 1-800 number um, for service to get a partner that you can utilize for one-on-one -on -one appointments. You can actually go either physically in person if they're open for business or basically be able to see what else you could do to upload the documentation. The 1-800 number for the program is 1-877-721-0097. Once again, the toll-free number is 1-877-721-0097. And for those who need a partner to be referred to for assistance uh, that are more in-depth on one-on-one, please ask the uh, customer service care representative to give you a list of contact uh, info for your region that could help you with that. And you can call them and set up an appointment. For those who need language assistance, this one 877 number can also direct you to 12 additional languages for the program that you can access um, for services in languages. Under the icon, when you go to the portal to find a partner, you can also request it by region by county or by languages. I want to emphasize that uh, a tip for this application is to have a valid email address and please set up one uh, particularly for this um, program or make sure you follow the guidance here on this page. And very importantly, please do uh, make sure you check your spam box and check your email uh, junk to make sure that you do not delete emails from Lendistry. So Lendistry is the organization I mentioned that has been partnered with Empire State to actually manage this program in terms of the application and all the associated documentation upload. So make sure to look again for Lendistry.com emails for your uh, follow-ups as well as uh, back and forth communication. So the languages that are available for this program is in Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Yiddish, Bengali, Korean, Haitian Creole, Italian, Arabic, Polish, Hindi, and German. 
I'm not going to go through the application specific questions because I cover all the different information you are requested to to answer and upload. But when you get a chance to take a look, I suggest highly that you actually gather all the info answer uh, in by hand first. And when you're ready to go onto the portal to fill it in, you have everything handy and you can fill it out within a few minutes. Now, I just want to uh, point out this particular page shows when you actually sign up for the uh, username and the password, uh, you may encounter a slight delay potentially up to a few minutes because there are plenty of businesses also are uh, trying to get on to get uh, the application. So as you see here, uh, at that point when we did the screenshot of this slide, there were 20, there were 2,340 applica applicants trying to log on, try to get an account, and the wait time is only five minutes. So make sure that um, you can hold on and uh, just sign up with your account first and come back to it if you are unable to fill in the application. So I'm not going to uh, walk through the specific, like I mentioned before. Importantly, if you want to be signing up for the SMS text policy, please sign up for it. If you do not want to, you can opt out. But if you want to get a regular messaging from uh, for the LenderStreet.com website about your application, please sign up for text messaging services. The own information, I mentioned all the uh, personal info. Please take a look. So now I'm going to actually go through um, the email that you're going to get and what it looks like when you get it. So you know for sure this is the actual email coming from Lendistry and not from a scammer. So here, this is the email you're going to get when you actually do get an email from Lendistry. You're going to see the icon of Empire State to the left uh, corner and then powered by Lendistry. It will give you the same number. It will be giving you a 877 number. And also, you have a confirmation message either tell you you completed the file or that you're missing one or two items or that you need clarification on one or two things. So as they get reviewed, you get an email from Lendistry and it'll look like this. So make sure that uh, you recognize it and that you're okay with um, reading and accepting and submitting an information. So lastly, I just want to uh, highlight when you upload the documents, you would encounter a page at the end. When you have uploaded everything, you will say completed or you'll be in red. So if it's in red, you are not complete with that section. So just make sure that everything is in green when you upload the document to, to be okay with, yes, I finished the process, I uploaded everything, and you should get a confirmation saying, yes, you uploaded everything. But for you to just know um, as you go along with the process, to know that if you have a lot of uh, orange, in your page when you actually upload documents, that means you have uh, still have homework to do to make sure that they're complete. And these uh, pages give you the uh, uh, screenshots about how you upload documents if you're not familiar with that process. And lastly, linking up your banking information. There are two ways to receive your money. You are either going to sign up for a service called PLAID P-L-A-I-D, which will give you the steps uh, to follow, is the fastest and easiest way to get your funds um, into your account because this particular portal would actually verify all the info that we need for your banking info and your personal info. Uh, but if you do not have it, do not worry. You can also receive your funds electronically uh, via your bank account, and we do need to link your bank account. So do follow these steps to get the funds. And for those people who do not use um, electronic uh, fund transfer or it does not have a bank account, please do call the 877 number that I mentioned before for customer service where you can request uh, a partner in your region and they can refer to you and help you set up a bank account with a credit union or local community development financial institution uh, that has ability to, uh, to set up accounts or a regular bank in your region that is interested in your business and can set up an account for you. So lastly, I just want to repeat, the phone number to call is 877-721-0097, and the website address is www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com, and I'm happy to entertain any questions that may have um, been received in the chat box, or if you're calling in and you'd like to unmute yourself, you can ask the question, and I'll be happy to answer those. Uh, but I want to emphasize before I take questions, that if you have thought that you're qualified for the program as you heard the overview of the program, please get your stuff ready and apply as soon as possible. And once you've completed the application, you have uh, 15 days to upload your documents. So make sure that those are ready to go when you go to the application portal. 
And if you have thought about 10 other businesses in your region that could use the funds right now, please let them know about the program and um, tell your friends and family and your best uh, buddies at church. Please uh, let them know about the program. This is a big grant program for Funds Unlimited, even though it's capitalized at $800 million. So we'd like to see as many small businesses helped as possible. So, Matt, if you see any questions on the chat box, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you, Wayman. Uh, wow, that was a great presentation. Uh, very informative. I appreciate you taking all this time. And um, if you want, if it's not proprietary, and I could share that PowerPoint, uh, you know, through our social media channels and website, folks that are interested, or a version of the PowerPoint, uh, you know, please email that to me, and I'll get that out to our to uh, to our business members, the business community. Yeah, that that would be great. But I was going to say again, everything that you saw is actually on the portal right now at www.nysmallbusinessrecovery.com. Just scroll to the middle of the page. It says Program Guide. Click on it. You get the actual whole deck. Thanks, Wayman. Um, I actually got a couple of questions texted to me, and as a as I read after as I read the first one, if anyone has any questions uh, that's watching now and listening, if you want to put it in the chat box, I'm happy to read the question for you, or feel free to reach out to me or Wei Min after the event. Uh, Wei Min, I got texted, uh, one person watching texted me this question. If I made more than $500,000 in 2019 tax returns, but was but my business was closed for much of 2020 due to the pandemic, so I didn't make that in 2020, can I still apply? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. So if you made more than $500,000 in 2019, but in 2020 you made less than $500,000, you're eligible to apply. So for example, I know that we all have uh, dentists in our lives. Uh, basically, I think dental uh, practices were practically closed in 2020, except for a few people who need emergency sessions. Most people were not going in for regular visits. So they were closed for majority of the time, and they may have closed, let's say, more than a million dollars in 2019. But in 2020, they had a lot less than that, and they had gross um, less than $500,000. They can apply. Okay. And the, and the second question I got was, uh, I'm not great with my computer. I don't really even understand how to upload these documents. Uh, is there a way I can get help with that? Yeah, like I said before, we have a set of um, partners uh, across the regions that you're located in that can help you with that um, by calling either the one eight seven 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 two one zero zero nine seven number and requesting that you locate uh, through the customer service care representative uh, an entity that could help you uh, with directions or either doing one on one uh, appointments physically, locally in your region, or basically calling to find out how you can uh, upload those documentation. That would be one way. And also, if you have younger folks in your family that may have tablets or other ways to get into a computer, you may want to ask for assistance also at home uh, for the younger generation to, uh, to assist you with that. Okay. Um, and with that said, I don't see any other questions in the chat box and nobody else has texted or emailed. Oh, I got one from Yvonne Anderson. Does the, okay. company, does the company have, do the companies have to be located in disadvantaged area to qualify for this grant? Oh, no, you do not have to be uh, located in this advantage uh, like locations based on census is for prioritization of awards for eligibility you can apply so i suggest that you actually submit if everything else is um eligible for your type of business no so the answer is no great um if anyone has any more questions i'll give it a few moments um but if so not, meanwhile, I was going to yeah. uh, just suggest that all those people who are, are listening to this webinar, besides thinking about the 10 people they can recommend a grant to, think about all the people that owe you money from from, from your business, that uh, is B2B or any customers who is the business. Think about them and say, hey, uh, there's a grant program that um, currently is available. If you think you may need the fund to pay some of the expenses, <clears throat> please uh, contact this program and apply, and you can utilize the um, grant proceeds as long as they're related to the period I mentioned in March 1st of 2020 and April 1st of 2021. So they can actually pay you the expenses in accounts receivable that you have um, uncollected at the moment. I also will mention that if you have utility expenses for your business that were in arrears, you could also do the same thing, apply for the grant, pay those off. Um, so it's a great program for users that you have um, not paid, as well as for maybe some expenses that you have incurred. And for those, um, you know, we're going to post this uh, recording of this event on our website and social media channels, YouTube page, um, YouTube channel rather. So um, if you know folks, um, if you're if you have networks and, and colleagues that may be interested in um in in this uh in this program please let them know it'll be there 
Um, with that said, Wei Min, I want to thank you again. This was great. You did a great job, and we're really appreciative of you giving the time for us. And, and thank you to Carol Longworth, who's the regional director at Empire State Development and a great leader for your organization. Yeah, thank you, Matt, for reaching out and for hosting the webinar and for the small businesses that spend the time in learning about this program. Uh, make sure that you get your stuff ready, and we're ready to consider your application. So thank you so much again for the time, and uh, we wish you great success in everything you do. Thanks. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thank you.